Yo, what's up ladies and gentlemen, good to see you again, and if you watched yesterday's video, or if you watched pretty much any content creator's video, um, you probably saw the ban list and what's going to be happening in the future of, you know, uh, the meta of One Piece. Uh, it's still up in the air as to like what is going to be, you know, realistically viable or what's going to be the best, but I still think there's plenty of staples that we've been seeing over in the Eastern meta that are probably going to be taking over in that new slot as like you know the top deck and i do believe gecko moria to be one of them and so i've changed up the list a little bit to adhere to you know what the ban list is uh taking out of the out of the game being great eruption mostly just for this deck um great eruption was ran at four but now we don't run the card so i was instead changing ice age to four but <clears throat> We're using Eggman's wonderful new deck builder on his website. So shout out to him for uh, the awesome deck builder. It's actually really great just being able to like pretty much add any single card very easily. So very pleased with how this looks. And um, yeah, so a lot of what this list is, you know, kind of about is a lot of the Thriller Bark, but also the Navy package. Uh, there are a few cards that are of different archetypes, but they have their purposes, and that's mostly for like a cost Moria or getting cards into trash and defending yourself. So, hence uh, Rob Lucci just being able to get this into trash and using the KO effect to KO a lot of cards uh, on your opponent's side, and then as well as Sabo protecting your board, also having a really nice 6k stat line, easy 1k counter to get into trash and uh, being able to recycle some of those cards that you might need from your hand into trash, such as Luchi. Luchi is a kind of a, it's it's a pain sometimes um, to get into trash just because you really might not have like a Thriller Bark card in trash that you're able to play using leader effect and you need to, you know, trash one card. You'd love for it to be Luchi, but you just sometimes have to do like an Absalom or like a, per a Perona or Dr. Hogback or something like that. But uh, yeah, this was kind of my take on what the list might look like. I actually have a few cards in here that I know some people aren't like super big on, but I've actually been loving them in testing. Uh, one of which being Cerberus. I really like this two cost card. There tends to be um certain turns where i'm like man i actually can't play gecko down because i want to play offensively but like i can't you know i can't survive the next turn unless i'm able to play some form of defensive play right uh it tends to be a lot of the times against like um yamato or something of the sorts or even potentially uh like katakuri uh you might have an issue playing up against maybe even uh, Perona, but it just kind of depends on the situation and how many cards your opponent has on the board, uh, how many swings they have, your life situation. So uh, what I've found is that uh, using Ice Age with Gecko Moria combination, uh, playing out Rob Lucci uh, rested as a four cost, and then Cerberus active as that two cost blocker is actually fantastic. Um, this card is also amazing into the Yamato matchup. Uh, a lot of the times, if I start with this in my starting hand, I'll tend to keep the hand against Yamato because I will just be able to trash this, play down the blocker that they can't rest super easily off the, the first few turns, and those double attacks aren't that big of a threat. And now when I'm attacking into life and I'm building a board and also placing down like maybe Borsalinos or Sabos, they're having a really tough time getting around, uh, you know, parts of that. And Cerberus is just like the freest block in the world. You put it into trash, recycle it over and over and over and over again. Uh, Yamato really, had, from what I've seen, hates this card. It's also, <clears throat> it's also that third blocker that you sometimes need when you know that they can potentially have Hody Jones in hand. So just running it as a two of right now has been 
fantastic for me personally. Uh, Hell Meppo is in there as a three of. I was originally running this at two when I had Great Eruptions in the list. Uh, I was running this at two, I think Sabo at three, and like, I can't remember. I think Dr. Hogback at three or something like that. It was a little silly, but I was trying out some different stuff to have like three Ice Age and four Great Eruptions. But uh, now I can kind of, I don't know, kind of solidify how it all feels as far as, you know, being able to have your Navy archetype as well as your uh, Thriller Bark Pirates. But um, yeah, you've got so many 2Ks in this, uh, in this list as well, having 12 2Ks between Perona, the Sindri, and Suru. Uh, Sindri is kind of like that turn one play if you have it. If you don't, you know, then you don't really need to play this card. Otherwise, like, you don't always really need to play this card turn one. It just it it just helps you set up your trash for the late game. Um, then you don't have to worry about potentially having to use your leader effect every single turn and trashing a card. So it just kind of depends. But I, I personally love playing this on turn one, but also depends on what my hand's looking like. Uh, I have two of the Kuzans in here. I think the Kuzan is just fantastic into the yellow matchup. It's also really nice into the mirror. Uh, if your opponent, if you're playing against your opponent now, not having great eruption, um, forcing them to use an Ice Age or a Suru into like an Absalom is just painful, you know, or Helmeppo. Yeah, almost forgot my main man Helmeppo there. It's pretty painful you know they're like oh god i really had to dedicate like an extra card just for a kuzan it's like hey i already drew my card off this so if it does get removed sure i could just bring it back with gecko moria later on in the match um it's also really nice in that respect to be able to play gecko moria have kuzan either as rested or active like if i'm going rested i'm playing cerberus active uh if i'm going active then Maybe I'm just playing like a brand new rested. So I'm getting to draw two cards, replace uh, the gecko that I had just played and establish two new bodies onto the board. One being a pretty massive threat for your opponent to deal with uh, considering you have Absalom in your arsenal uh, in trash. So I've personally been uh, like, obviously this is a brand new kind of list, but I've really been enjoying, you know, a very similar variation to this that had the Great Eruption. So with this and everyone kind of being on the same field of not having Great Eruption, this does honestly just feel really nice. Um, I would say that probably the, the worst matchups that I've experienced, uh, playing into as Gecko Moria are, uh, Perona, if they really like really high roll uh perona is really annoying if they high roll like and get uh eight cost on curve into multiple 10 cost do flamingos it can just be super frustrating to deal with they'll, they'll more than likely freeze your leader you're not able to use leader effect uh gecko mori is more than likely getting frozen uh pretty much everything on your board gets removed very easily uh, that's why borsalino and sabo are just so important in some of those matchups but uh, yeah, Perona, it doesn't feel like a terrible matchup, but it does feel like uh, if they see everything, it's it's very tough to play into. Um, as far as yellow is concerned, I actually have been having pretty good success with this. I feel like playing up against Yamato isn't all that bad with this deck list. Um, playing into Katakuri can be kind of a 50-50 though, because it, it really just depends on you know what they're seeing uh what they're seeing out of life uh, sometimes like a single life can kind of it can kind of throw you off uh but now that we have reject being um being banned uh for sure kuzan is just like invaluable absolutely invaluable against the yellow matchup um yellow's probably more than likely gonna have to start teching back in uh, Thunderbolt to deal with this card in many of you know some of the matchups they'll have so uh, that's one thing I've been thinking of for my own catalyst and just testing that is Thunderbolt's kind of a reality again because yeah you can rely on getting Onami out of life but if you're really just trying to you know win off pure RNG that's that's pretty rough 
I also think Thunderbolt does, uh, as well as K KOing like Kuzan and uh, potentially removing like Sabo after the turn after it's unKOable, it, it puts them within range of being able to use Amaru. And that's why this list just has 10 blockers, uh, gives you ample enough, uh, ample enough, you know, defense to stop some of those like late game swings that are potentially trying to end the match. Um, yeah. I, I personally, I love Gecko. This is probably the list that I'm most excited for in OPO5, or excuse me, OPO6. But I'd love to hear you guys' thoughts. And I just wanted to make a couple of videos of these decks throughout the week. So I'm going to have a bunch of these coming up over the next few days. I should have Perona. Uh, I should also have Yamato, uh, Reiju, and a Katakuri, more than likely. But I'll catch y'all in the next one. And uh, other than that, peace.